Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So we are from Group Seven. We'll be presenting on the topics of Khan and duties to oneself. First of all, I would like to introduce our group members. There are three of us, which are Miss Natima Bada, Tuan Nurul Nadila binti Tuan Mat, and me myself, Sohaila Afika binti Muhammad Nasir. So for this video, I will I will be the first presenter. First, I will start with the introduction of the founder of this theory, who is Immanuel Kant. Uh, Immanuel Kant, he was born in 1724 in the East Prussian town of Konigsberg. He studied physics and mathematics during his university life. Then he worked as a lecturer of metaphysics. He also was appointed as a professor of philosophy at the University of Konigsberg. Until today, he was considered as one of the greatest thinkers uh, and he is also was recognized as a central figure of a modern philosophy. Moving on to the next point of my presentation is individual morality. So, um, in, in understanding Kantian's theory of morality, he introduced a term which is called as deontology. Deontology is an ethical term, uh, which it is an ethical theory which uh, justifies morality lies in the action that people perform rather than the consequences of the action. It is basically stressed upon the it is stressed upon the relationship between the duty and the morality of the humans. Uh, it, in another words, it is an action that was naturally expressed by someone, uh, which it is because of it. It is also something that is naturally expressed by the goodwill. So, uh, the goodwill is actually the only good things that will always be good without any qualifications. Uh, there are some things that are good, such as money, good looks, intelligence, courage. However, these kind of things still can be good or bad. Same goes also for the consequences or reward that we get from uh, performing the good actions. It still can be good or bad. However, the goodwill will always be good in itself. The good will is actually the will to do the right thing. Acting from the good will can build up our morality as we we perform we perform a good actions because of we realize it is something that is right to do. For example, uh, a person uh, who helps someone because uh, she realized that it is. Uh, the right thing to do because of the right reason, not because of she wants to be recognized as a good people, as a kind people, or uh, because of the consequences or the rewards that she will get by helping that person. Okay, thank you to the uh, presenter, Sister Sohaila. I will continue with the basic of uh, self regarding duties and freedom. Commonly, people assume that when people presented with various alternative choices, they would have the freedom to choose whatever they want on with the basis of individual desire. This is what Kant called as the idea of freedom, which is also known as libertarian freedom. Kant, however, uh, see the freedom in different ways and in a more sophisticated manner. Libertarians would state that one is free when they can choose whatever they want. However, Khan believes that choosing what you want isn't freedom at all. Khan insists that um, acting on the basis of desire is being governed, not by one's reason, but by their primitive and animalistic instinct. Uh, according to the Khan, uh, freedom can be described as the ability to govern one's action uh, on the basis of reason and not desire. 
this can be reduced the concept of autonomy, uh, which is literal translating as self-legislator. So the idea is not to live uh, by one's instinct, but uh, we should live um, by the laws that uh, we impose ourselves. So in Tan's view, libertarian freedom isn't real at all, isn't real, but in reality, it is just enslavement of oneself to their desire. Uh, he said that uh, as a boundary for the classifications of individual morals, where desire can be a rational fuel for one's opinion of what's moral. This relates to freedom is a really eye-opening way. Uh, through Kant's work, uh, we begin to understand that freedom uh, cannot coincide with the operation of one's pure reason, where the operation is desired. We can begin to run our life on the basis of what we consider moral through the use of pure reason, rather than surrender to what we want. Uh, Kant's principles, based on notions that each of us has worth of dignity that must be respected. This dignity make it wrong for others to abuse us or to use us against our wills. That means uh, dignity is uh, not for others to abuse us or uh, also use our dignity to against our will. Uh, Kant express the idea as a moral principle. Uh, treat, uh, treat a person as an end is to respect the person's dignity by allowing each the freedom to choose for oneself. Uh, freedom is not the only basis for principle underlying the states. Uh, in theory and practice, uh, Kant also made the freedom as the first of the three principles. Uh, the three principles are the freedom of every member, once of the state as the human being. Uh, the other two is the capability of each with every other uh, of a uh, subject. Uh, and then the last one is the independence of every member of a commonwealth as uh, a citizen. Okay, uh, from these uh, three principles, can uh, put the uh, freedom as the first one and that means freedom is really important. Uh, the this uh, in the theory of and in the theory and practice, uh, freedom is discussed uh, uh, as the autonomous right of all individuals to conceive um, of happiness in their own way. Uh, it means that we should find our happiness based on our ways, not by uh, by the influence, uh, not by influencing by the others. Okay. Uh, so the interference interference with another's freedom is understood as pressure to the other to be happy as the former sees suitable. Uh, each may pursue happiness uh, as they see suitable for them. Uh, uh, does not mean uh, that we can break other similar pursuit. Uh, in theory and practice, uh, that stress freedom uh, is the autonomous right uh, of uh, individuals to conceive happiness uh, in their own way. Uh, interference with another's freedom is understood as pressure to the other to be happy as the former sees suitable. Uh, each may pursue happiness uh, as they see suitable with them uh, pursued. Uh, as long as the, uh, does, uh, they does not um, does not interfere or break other similar pursuits. It means that everyone has uh, their own ways to pursue happiness, uh, but we cannot uh, we cannot um, we cannot interfere with others' way uh, in order to find their own way. Uh, still, okay, and uh, that's mean the freedom. Uh, the next one, I will talk about the self-respect. Uh, Kantian dignity is one of the form status work, but evaluate, evaluative self-respect um, has to do with acquired worth, merit, based on the quality of, of one's character and conduct. 
we can earn and lose moral merit. At the same time, through what we do or we become, we we know either we deserve or don't deserve in evaluative self-respect. Also, come focus on dignity-based recognition uh, self-respect. Okay, through Kantian conceptions of person's grounds dignity, we can distinguish three kinds of recognition self-respect. The first one is respect for oneself as a person or among persons, as a member of the moral community with a status and dignity equal to every other person. For example, thinking of oneself as having certain moral rights that others uh, ought not to violate is part of this kind of respect. The second recognition of oneself is appreciation of oneself as an agent, a being with the ability and responsibility to act autonomously and value appropriately. It is a duty one owes to oneself to preserve one's own life and or develop one's talents and or preserve one's self-respect. For example, if we can prevent ourselves from doing suicide, it means that we already have a self-respect because we value our own life. The third kind of recognition self-respect is the appreciation of the importance of being autonomously self-defining. One way a self-respecting individual does this is through having and living in light of a normative self-conception. For example, a conception of being and living that she regards as worthy of her uh, as the particular person she is. She is. This means that as long we live, uh, as long we live and act according uh, the way we want, uh, and then uh, we regard that it is worthy for us to to behave like that. We already uh, um, we already keep our perseverance for ourselves. So we already give ourselves respect. Okay, that's all from me. Uh, thank you. I will pass the stage to the next presenter. Uh, okay, for my part, I will present is about the self-love. And first, we need to understand what is mean by self-love. Self-love is a person is able to practice. Like uh, loving yourself, it doesn't mean you think you are the smartest, uh, the most talented and most beautiful, beautiful person in the world. But when you love yourself, you may accept your, uh, so we call it weakness and appreciate this color the shortcoming as something that make you to know who you are and when you love yourself you have a uh, like compassion for yourself and another meaning for the self-love is mean that taking care of your own needs and not uh, what we call it, uh, sacrificing your well-being to please others and also not setting for the less than what you deserve for the Mm, why self satisfies and do not take themselves to tax it mean that uh, what we should cultivate, cultivate is self esteem and they have another quote for the self love is like one find his happiness in being uh, considered by his follow worthy and uh, his follow worthy is in the of self esteem and whether is uh, his true and interesting words. Okay, next point is self mastery. Self mastery is to involve discipline toward uh, our own life, and it means like uh, we must be able to uh, distinguish between moral discipline and discipline of produce. And the first, moral discipline is to master and control our feeling, and the second is discipline of Mm, produce a uh, prudence uh, sense of feeling uh, and to certify our uh, inclination and the biggest uh, they have the problem it's like the biggest problem facing our development of self mentally they have two biggers uh, the first one is the effect or motivational uh, component and the second is must weaken the pro processing forces
this is the another dimension of uh, self mastery to characteristic uh, suspicion of judgment. They have four. Uh, the first one is do not react uh, spontaneously, and the second one is do not respond to the strong emotion like anger. And the third one is reaction are uh, delayed by control and control and the uh, autocracy of mind. And the fourth one is delay decision making the until issue is fully considered. And the last one is can over overcome the discomfort of work and the duties to our own bodies in regarding to our life and the first is the use of a rational will to uh, destroy our own body is in illogical and the second is the values of the cannot be made by contributors and the last is mystery cannot uh, be justified the suicide and next is the duty toward the body itself and the body must be disciplined and also, the mind must begin uh, mastery over the body, and we should not practice uh, pain and fasting as they simply with uh, the body, and also we must strengthen and harden the body. And the last one, the body is uh, abused by bestial and satanic uh, rises. Uh, this is the last like uh, may occupation. Occupation is the comparison inter work or play, and also work activity, uh, sustain life, and the lastly is idle enjoyment make life impressive.